Hi guys, today I'm going to be reviewing Nina Is Not Okay by Shappi Corsandi. Now I'm not sure if I've pronounced that correct or not, so do let me know in the uh, comments. Um, but yeah, she's a comedian that I've not heard of before, so I didn't know if I'd really find this book entertaining or not. I don't know if she'd have maybe some of her own personal experiences embedded within it, but regardless, I enjoyed the way it was written. Not knowing her as a comedian did not like lower my feelings towards this book but I'll go into how I feel about it in a second. Um, I did get this as a read for review through NetGalley so I got a free e-arc for a, a certain amount of days um, via the publishers and um, author of course so I want to say thank you to them for giving me that opportunity but of course that does not change my opinion either way of whether I enjoyed or disliked this book. As usual, you guys know I'm 100% honest with things like that so yeah. I just want to quickly say when I come across books as powerful as this it makes me wonder why I don't read as much contemporary as I should do like I really enjoyed it obviously I'll go into more detail in a second but I just wanted to throw that out there so this book has been on my mind since I finished it so I took that as a sign to make a video about it I didn't think that a Goodreads or NetGalley review was good enough I felt like I needed to really uh, give out all my feelings in a video because I want to go into spoilers as well and of course on my Goodreads and NetGalley reviews I try to avoid spoilers as much as possible but if you do want to read a more put together um, non-spoiler review you can check out my Goodreads link and read that up for yourself if you like because I don't know if I'm going to be saying everything that I mentioned in there vice and vice versa you know. So I'm going to be starting with the non-spoiler section and then I'll let you know when I'm going on to more of the spoilery discussion in case you haven't read it and I don't want to ruin it for you. So this was definitely a five star read for me and I think it was a f one of the first five star reads in a long while. I absolutely loved this book, it was bloody brilliant, it really was. I think that might be a bit difficult to understand if if you've read this book or you kind of know what it's about. Um, it's, a, it's a tricky subject, it talks about a lot of touchy things that maybe you shouldn't be enjoying reading but it was done so well and so full of respect that I just can't help loving this the, the entirety of this book. So in this book we're following of course Nina, she's our main protagonist and she's just currently going through her A levels at college and she also kind of balances that with drinking a lot and going out and partying. Now I'm not going to kind of go through the main plot drive for this story because I feel like it sort of unravels itself as you read and I want you guys to try and feel as much emotion as I did when I read it because I didn't really know what it was going to be about, I just kind of saw it and thought oh that sounds interesting, it didn't really say much in the description but it was enough to lure me in. So I kind of want you guys to feel just how I felt reading this and I kind of want you to experience um, as the story unfolds for yourself rather than me explain it. But just so you know, it's about a, kind of like a, a young girl, Nina, drinks a bit too much, trying to get good grades for her A-levels and a lot of other stuff. I'll talk a bit more in depth in my spoilery discussion if you want to stick around for that part. Nina as a protagonist was such a joy to read from. She was not only funny, but the way she worded her experiences and what was going on right then in that moment was just so emotional. There was quite a few times where I had to sort of draw back a second and just take a moment to kind of absorb what she said because it was so overwhelming with emotion and I did get quite a few tears like brimming on the surface. Um, yeah, it was just, it was really well written and I just want to say that I feel like everyone should read this <laughs> straight away. I think I really enjoyed reading from her point of view because she just sounded like a regular girl, like she was really believable, the things that she'd been through, the way she spoke, her friends, everything, it just felt like this is a real life of someone, I'm reading a diary entry of a real person, you know, it had that constant believability and it blew me away. <laughs> the author literally said everything that was on Nina's mind and I don't want to say Nina said everything that was on her mind because she didn't really express her feelings much to her friends and family and that but the point of view you're reading from you can almost feel those emotions from her that they, they really kind of reflect on yourself you know it really absorbs you and everything she said or did or was happening to some degree I felt was my experience I felt like up that was happening to me you know it's just so well written in that way that I felt like in that moment I was Nina <laughs> and that's a really strange thing to see it say I don't know if any of you have had that experience where you can be in a situation where you're not at all like that character you're reading but as in with this example you almost feel like you're them the way it's worded everything it's just so it so powerfully like impacts you and that's how I felt with this book so there's some gaps in the story say like um 
Nina goes out for a night and then she comes back and you don't hear what happens during that night. You just kind of um, continue the story with her waking up. I, I didn't know how to feel at the, at the beginning of that um, when that was kind of, I guess, written in that way. But after a, little, a quick while, actually, I realised, you know, this makes sense. It's very reflective of Nina's own story. This is how she feels. She can't remember what's going on, you know, so it kind of mirrors her mirrors her perfectly I guess I don't know what I really wanted to say there it kind of my words left me for a second <laughs> I will say that some names were a bit tricky to keep track of but honestly the confusion left as soon as it came I realized I put them in place and I was like oh yeah this is that person this is that person and that was only because um, there is a vast cast of characters like there's so many and that, that again adds to the believability like she not only knows just one or two people she's talking about pretty much everyone in her college her family her extended family friends people that she meets on the street you know so there was quite a few different names to try and keep track of but honestly that was just a passing thing it just as I said I remembered people as quickly as I forgot them do you know what I mean overall I just want to say this was an unexpectedly powerful read I'm so happy that I decided to just jump for it and read it definitely the best book I've read so far this year I mean it's what halfway through the year I don't know and I'm making such a bold claim already but I think everyone should read this this you know you don't have to relate to the character and kind of what the story is about to enjoy it because to be honest I don't relate to Nina at all really um, but you know it makes you feel like you can relate it, it kind of sucks you in and makes you feel all these emotions so I definitely recommend this book to anybody and everybody so now that I've spoken a bit about my non-spoilery thoughts I'm going to go into the book talky um, spoilery discussion section so please don't watch this if you haven't already read this book but you know carry on if you've read this book or you don't mind spoilers or maybe you're not planning on reading it but you just want to hear my thoughts I don't know <laughs> so again I've got my little notes they might be a little bit jumbled a little bit out of order as usual with my book talks but um, this is literally just a discussion so I'm just plucking ideas and kind of going with it so the escalating alcoholism I didn't know it was going to have such a big sort of feature in this. I knew obviously just from the snippets of the synopsis that Nina had uh, possibly a drinking problem but it went deep and it went dark and I was not expecting the depth that this book went into. Um, of course it all kind of in a way even though Nina was saying she feels bad for her dad having to take this blame but it comes back to the point that her dad died of alcoholism and then of course her ex-boyfriend Jamie leaving her it kind of triggered that impulse to uh, I'm not a therapist or anything but this is the kind of vibe that I'm getting so please don't take offense to any of this if it in some way relates to you but um it kind of triggered that and then she thought in a way she, going out getting smashed every night was kind of her way of coping or just you know having fun leaving it but she was she was grieving for her dad if she didn't know and for her lost relationship with Jamie and I mean as, as simple as breaking up with a boyfriend is it can do that to a person you know I can really imagine it doing that to a person so that was in no way a um, over exaggerated plot I think it was really believable and I really respect kind of the way Shappy the author I really respected the way that she went about it and kind of delivered the story casual sex thing again that kind of goes hand in hand with her alcoholism that was terrible she was doing things she knew she you know she'd regret but she kept doing it and doing it and doing it and you know it was the alcohol she was explaining kind of tricking her putting her into this false pretense that she's enjoying herself when really she's not she couldn't even hold her sister her little sister because she felt too dirty too unclean so obviously it was doing lasting damage and at the time she didn't want to acknowledge that and it was so emotional to read it from that perspective you know seeing this young she's only 17 at the time for most of the book or half of the book i'd say and it was it was really heartbreaking to see all that happening to her because I feel like that could happen to any one of my friends, you know, and I might not even be aware of it. So it really opened my eyes to kind of consider everybody's situation a bit more, have some more compassion and kind of, you know, help where I can. So I feel like this book kind of inspired me to be a better person if I'm not already the best I can be, you know. I just want to quickly talk about the... Um, the part where I think it was after her birthday or the night of her birthday and she tried to have sex with Beth's dad Max when she was moving in with them for a bit oh my god the fact okay initially the fact that her family left to go to Germany that probably didn't put her in a good place because she was in the middle of her A-level she probably felt like she was unwanted she didn't care they didn't care and that and then all of it probably bubbled up she got drunk she fancied Max a little bit and oh my god oh my god that was just that was crazy obviously that sent her over the edge she needed to go to rehab and that was 
intense. Like I couldn't, like I kind of called it. I knew she was going to try and do something with Max, but I didn't know it was going to be that extreme, that intense. Also cringy, but at the same time, super, super sad, you know, like that she felt like she kind of owed people this in terms of the casual sex and, you know, with Max. She felt like she owed everybody that was showing her a bit of attention, you know, casual sex. And nobody, whether you're a girl, boy, whatever, nobody should have to feel like that and oh, get a bit emotional. <laughs> this book really pulled out all the feels, honestly. So, Zoe's release of the tape, of the uh, video recording of her pretty much getting raped by Zoe's boyfriend, Alex. Blimey, that was emotional. That's the part where I was like, pretty much crying. I, I don't even know how to go about explaining my feelings about this because it's such a subject that everybody kind of shuns and that, and you shouldn't, you need to be able to speak about these things. But obviously I don't want to say something that makes someone upset in my own ignorance, you know, because that can easily happen. But I just want to say that I did not realize it was going to go that dark. I didn't realize that it was going to pull all of those emotions out of me. And that for that, for me, that was just like, the I don't even know. My mind is blown, honestly. I was so, so sad reading that from, from um, her point of view. Like, the fact that Zoe did that in the first place, I was so angry. But then at the same time, as you can see from Nina's point of view, she is saying that Zoe is clearly in some sort of emotionally abusive relationship. She wasn't in her right state of mind. I mean, I'm not condoning her um, actions at all, but if, if Nina can see that Zoe was not in the right frame of mind of doing that, then I can see that, you know. Yeah, and also the fact that Zoe didn't release the pictures that included Alex's face, you can really tell that she was like sucked in deep in that relationship, in that toxic relationship. So that was really sad as well to read about. But yeah, Alex was just a scum, honestly, and his friend. I can't remember his friend's name, but I am so disgusted and whoa, just reading that really brought the emotions out of me. So the bit where they were being kind of prosecuted and stuff, I was kind of shocked to see that that was kind of really glazed over, it was just they were talking about the detective, um, I can't remember the detective's name or whatever, the police officer, it was just really glazed and quick conversations and stuff and maybe it was something a bit too touchy that the author didn't want to really go too much into, it just wanted to get that justice quickly and you know get on with the main bulk of the story because I guess we kind of, in a way I did want to see more about what happened to Nina afterwards, I just kind of felt that that bit was a little bit too glazed over but still you know the outcome was satisfying I'm glad that Alex and that guy um, got done for it. But of course you know it didn't take away the fact that it still happened and Nina's got to live with that for the rest of her life so that was it was really sad. I was just looking over the footage and I completely forgot to mention the exploration of um, sexuality. It was like really interesting to see even though all the crap that Nina was going through she was still kind of trying to identify and find herself and realizing that she was bisexual was kind of groundbreaking it kind of gave her that little bit extra of something to you know love about herself and i think that was great maybe the way that she went about it because she was drunk for most of the situations wasn't the best way but at the end it was a, a great outcome to realize a little bit more about herself and love herself a little bit more so yeah just thought I'd quickly mention that so family and friends the support factor there she was like making loads and loads of good friends but then she kept like having sex with them and then ruined that friendship and she felt like as I mentioned earlier that she owed it to these people that's what she had to do and it's really sad to see that she felt like worthless and that's all she was good for you know so in a way I thought it was going to end in some sort of suicide matter but it didn't she came on top she realized you know there's people like Beth there's Robbie you know there's Steve is that uh, Beth's boyfriend is that his name um they're all there together even though her family did go to Germany and it probably wasn't the best idea um that probably tipped her over the edge as well they came back they supported her and Alan her stepdad actually showed you know emotion and stuck up for her and oh it was so cute and her relationship with Katie her little sister was just the sweetest thing I've ever read about like she clearly loved her little sister and in a way I think she was trying to stop all the all the alcohol all the sex for for her she wanted to be someone that Katie could look up to and I think she definitely is like it was beautiful that relationship was amazing so with the help of the AA meetings and obviously going into rehab even though she did relapse she 
she got over Jamie, even though they had casual sex. What was that about? Whoa. And I, I think he still wanted her, but at the same time with Marcia, so that was just poopy. Um, but yeah, she got over him, you know, she started kind of a new life, she's trying to kind of get somewhere with Robbie and it was just really sweet. It's really great that she can carry on with her life and kind of, you know, she was young. So she had a lot to live for and I'm glad it didn't end in some sort of suicide attempt or anything like that, even though she was saying that she did want to hurt herself and sort of die because of all the, the humiliation that she faced and everything. But um, yeah, I'm rambling now, but that was such a great book. As I mentioned earlier in the non-spoiler section, I urge everyone to read it and read it and read it and read it and yeah I've got to get a physical copy when I see it about out and about so thank you very much for watching do let me know what you think about the book um if it is spoilery in the in the comments please mention that it's spoilery just in case those that haven't read it see that you know and it's and it's get spoiled or whatever but yeah thanks very much for watching and I shall speak to you next time bye